Good morning. It's Saturday, August 8th, and as we look at our daily devotional series, we skipped yesterday, unfortunately, because of other things that, that uh, I had going in and with the funeral and so forth, and so I, I didn't get in front of the camera. Um, but today we continue in John 18, and we look at the arrest of Jesus on the night that he was betrayed in the Garden of Gethsemane by Judas. You know, when we look at this section of Scripture, what always strikes me is the power in Jesus' words. And I think when we talk about the power of God's Word, we often are thinking about the, the ability for it to create faith and to open hearts. Um, but there is sure, just sheer dynamic power in the word of our God. When you think back to creation and the fact that Jesus was present at creation and John 1 tells us that Jesus is the word and through him all things were created. Now think of the dynamic power at creation. God spoke and everything that he wanted done was created perfectly and put into place for this world. Every little thing, all by his spoken word, the power that that has. And then you think throughout the Old Testament, different examples of the power of God. That when he spoke, the mountains shook. You know, you think of the... Uh, the power of God's word with the plagues simply said, let there, you know, the Lord said, this is what's going to happen. And boom, these major events, terrifying events befell the Egyptians and the land in which they were living. And then you look at the words of Jesus in his ministry as he's working and preaching and teaching. He tells demons to be quiet and be still and they listen. He tells demons to leave individual people and they have to comply. You think of the awesome power of the word of God on the stormy sea of Galilee when he stood up and just said one word. In English, two words, be still. And it, that was it. The water became like glass. And now here in this section of scripture from John 18, as Jesus is arrested... Once again, we get a glimpse of that dynamic power of his word. Because when they ask him, or when they answer his question, actually, I should say, Jesus asks who they're looking for, and they, ask, and they answer Jesus of Nazareth, and he says, I am he. Those words, I am he, had so much power that it physically forced those men to go back and fall down on the ground. And still they thought that they had power over Jesus as they arrested him. Still they thought that they were directing the affairs that night as they led Jesus to Caiaphas and Annas and then eventually to Pilate the next morning. And they thought that they were getting rid of the Son of God. That little glimpse of God's power on the night that he was arrested showed the world these men were not in charge. Jesus was laying down his life. He was allowing this to take place so that the scriptures might be fulfilled, so that our sins would be forgiven. God's plan of salvation that had been promised since the time of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden now was coming to fulfillment so that absolutely everyone who believes in Jesus as the Savior will have their sins forgiven and have that eternal life in heaven. The power of God's word, I think, is often underestimated by you and me. You know, we think of the fact that we have to try and convince people to believe in God, that we could argue them to believe. No, it has nothing to do with us. The power that changes hearts is the dynamic power of God's word. Never be afraid to unleash that power. 
That power that can literally move mountains, create mountains, create the world, silence demons and stop storms. With the words, I am he, knocked down an entire crowd that had come to arrest him. The power of that word is at work every time you and I testify to the truth of God's word as it works to penetrate sinful hearts. The Holy Spirit works through it to lead people to faith. And so when we have someone in our life that's not a believer, that doesn't trust in Christ as their Savior, we are armed with this awesome power of God's word. He wants us to use it. He's called upon us to testify to what we have read, what we have studied, what we have come to believe by faith through the work of the Holy Spirit and unleash this dynamic power. A power that cannot be stopped or throttled by anyone or anything. Let the Word of God, let the power of God's Word work. Share with those individuals you love sections of Scripture and let the Holy Spirit work with His awesome power. We read here in chapter 18 the account of the arrest of Jesus on Monday, Thursday. After saying these things, Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley, where there was a garden. He and his disciples went into it. Now Judas, who was betraying him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas took the company of soldiers and some guards from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and came there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, knowing everything that was going to happen to him, went out and asked him, Who are you looking for? Jesus the Nazarene, they said. I am he, Jesus told them. Judas the betrayer was standing with them. When Jesus told them, I am he, they backed away and fell to the ground. Then Jesus asked them again, who are you looking for? Jesus the Nazarene, they said. I told you that I am he, Jesus replied. So if you're looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the statement he had spoken. I did not lose any of those you have given me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his right ear. And the servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup my father has given me? When the company of soldiers, their commander, and the Jewish guards arrested Jesus and bound him. First they led him to Annas, because he was father-in-law to Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. Now it was Caiaphas who had advised the Jews it was better that one man die for the people. So as we look at this account here in Scripture and the fact that Jesus stops Peter and the rest of the disciples from defending him and stopping what was about to happen shows that Jesus is indeed in charge of the situation. The three words, I am he, knocked his adversaries literally to the ground that night. He could have walked away unharmed. Peter was ready to fight, even started a fight, but Jesus said, no, stop. This has to happen. And so Jesus was showing that though he had the power to walk away, he was also willing to serve as our Savior, willing to lay down his life for you and for me so that our sins might be forgiven and that our names be written in the book of life. Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for coming to this earth to, save, to serve as our Savior. We thank you for fulfilling the prophecies about God's plan of salvation, for preaching and teaching your holy word, for the power of that word as it is used and as we use it yet today with the promise that your Holy Spirit works through it upon hearts to change hearts and lives forever. You have promised that once the word of God has been shared with an individual, their life is never the, cha never the same, for it has been changed forever through the power of your word. Oh, Lord, as we live our lives, and oftentimes we come into situations that, that strike us with fear or intimidate us, we pray that you give us courage to share your word, knowing that your word is dynamic, that it has the power to do whatever it is that you wish to have take place. 
Lord, let us never be ashamed of that word, but let us share it joyfully and let us share it confidently, knowing that the promise of your Holy Spirit to work through that word continues to be a promise that exists and extends to us here today. Dear Lord, be with us as we witness and as we testify to the truth and use our witness to lead others to the light of the gospel and to the salvation that awaits for them in heaven. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. Amen.